before starting uh, my presentation i will say something about biodiversity parks and how it is functioning in delhi and how it has come into inception uh, so biodiversity parks are uh, a joint program of delhi development authority and delhi university so delhi university is providing technical support to uh, the urban setup of delhi uh, that is the dda and they are a developing agency they develop the infrastructure uh the roads or whatever it is and as a part of this green infrastructure they maintain uh city forest uh, urban parks and this is a new concept to develop biodiversity parks in delhi so that was uh initiation of the dda but they don't have expertise to develop biodiversity parks or nature reserves or wildlife sanctuaries in a uh, delhi or elsewhere uh, in ncr so they uh Uh, contacted the delhi university uh, and from delhi university it is being implemented to develop biodiversity parks so uh, the today's topic is role of biodiversity parks in wildlife conservation and management so before starting to this please change the slide please change the slides uh so if you see uh, the quote by un report that world is on notice as nearly 10 lakh species face extinction means today it is a world scenario that either flora and fauna we destroyed the wild habitats or wild lands due to uh, human expansion or human needs so we uh, what what uh, what uh, what results we have got from it it is the species which is facing extinction and nowadays worldwide and this number is not very small this is a huge number that includes all uh, cascade of the trophic structure either producer or consumer or decomposers whatever it is so to the entire world this kind of scenario is that uh, nearly 10 lakh species are facing extinction at present next please uh if you see uh, the world is becoming increasing in urbanized today and half of the world population uh world population lives in cities and if we count the indian scenario it is almost 35.90% that is the uh, data of 2020 if you see human history vast majority of people lived in sparsely settled rural areas and usually quite isolated they were so as people started moving to cities as part of an obvious economic process of globalization human population began to expand that led to over stressed habitat with a little room for nature so this uh, this is scenario going on worldwide and yeah next please slide change please so most developing countries governments have encouraged growth for their large cities as a means of linking their domestic economy with the rest of the globe this is a need of the uh, 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 r and since long it is happening and uh, large cities control the trade between urban areas both rural and international markets but they lack similar quality of environmental conditions as you know the suburb or other areas have the high urbanized centers like mega cities support huge human population and the enormous needs of natural resources the space for infrastructure have degraded their life supporting systems and the wildlife too suffered due to city expansion and human needs next please so uh, if you see uh, development at what at what cost this is a typical delhi scene uh, and if you see the past photograph of this uh, site it is typical of the knat place area touching both the rich area of delhi and the flood plains of river yamuna it used to be a good forest cover having more wildlife and everything but the expansion of the city due to uh, need of everything the university colleges roads and market and everything so that you sacrifice the wild lands and wild lands they house all your wildlife next please so what consequences if you develop a mega city or you develop the surrounding areas touching uh, uh, the suburb uh, of the mega cities so you lose flora you lose fauna disturbance in water cycle pollution problem biodiversity burden on natural resources you accumulate garbage 
you get barren, fragmented, degraded landscape, and moreover, intensive urban regeneration. This is what a typical each city is having with unplanned uh, settlements coming up out of this because the big cities requires uh, the facilities uh, from the urban set surrounding areas. So this is what intensive urban setup. The second is non-native species planting schemes uh, and lack of appropriate management of green spaces and a challenge for wildlife conservation of the surrounding areas. If you see, I will just quote example of Delhi, it expanded uh, up a radius of almost 100 kilometers. So you can imagine that how kind this, which kind of you know, impact uh, the mega cities are impacting on the uh, wildlife or the wild habitats of any of the areas. Next, please. If you see a uh, typical uh, Delhi state uh, landscape diversity and surrounding areas, it encompasses the Yamuna floodplains or the Yamuna river and a portion of Aravalli hills that is called popularly Delhi Ridge. And uh, the Delhi natural vegetation support thorn vegetation, forest and tropical humid dead deciduous forest. So typical two kinds of vegetation types are found in Delhi and they supported huge or enormous uh, a number of you know, wildlife in the past. Next, please. So, what you know, Yamuna does for uh, an Aravalli portion does for Delhi. Yamuna River with its vast flat plains and Aravalli hills are two major landforms of Delhi that support life. Yamuna River drains entire waste generated by Delhi and surface runoff and recharge the groundwater. Aravalli hills prevent spreads of disease, uh, deserts, traps, dust, act as a catchment and enhances water table. Both the land forms used to support luxuriant flora and fauna at one point of a time, but at not now at present. Next, please. So both the life supporting system lost their pristine glory and no longer provide equestrian services needed for the quality of life either to the human being or to the wild inhabitants, the flora and fauna of this uh, mega city. Next, please. So the environmental problem that Delhi state and NCR faces today are acute and cannot be allowed to continue unabated. Unless equal restoration is taken seriously, the future of the city itself is under question. So it is not only the wildlife population or uh, it is the city also that is supporting huge human population as well as the remnant of the wildlife populations in the areas. They are also suffering a lot due to this. Next, please. So, uh, as I told that ecological solution, uh, restoration is the solution for uh, degraded landscape of Delhi and NCR and surrounding areas. So, what is ecological restoration? I think everybody knows, but certainly we have to just emphasize some point. The process of assessing the recovery of an ecosystem that has been degraded, damaged or destroyed. Uh, we call uh, ecological restoration uh, two pictures shows the before and after of one of the scenes of Delhi's mining areas and convert into a typical uh, revival of the portion of ecosystem that we have lost on Delhi. Next, please. So concept of biodiversity parks has emerged out of the environmental problem faced by uh, Delhi state today. Next, please. So uh, one may ask, what is the concept and mission of biodiversity parks? So the concept of biodiversity parks are an integral component of the urban infrastructure of Delhi capital and serve as natural heritage sites of biodiversity that thrives in Delhi and its adjoining areas. The mission uh, of biodiversity park is to serve as a repository of biodiversity and a part of cultural heritage with ecological, cultural, educational benefits to the urban society and having conservation values. This is the most important. The last part is having conservation values apart from you know, providing all services. So it is not only that uh, these sim simple parks of you know, any of the urban areas providing the aesthetic or cultural look, but it must have a uh, conservation value that Padastri Park has. Next please. What are the functions you may ask? Badassi parks are productive assets that not only impart climate resilience, but also generate a wide range of ecological services to the city and its people 
with equity in respect of social hierarchies. So this, it is all giving ecological services that nature gives free, free to everyone. The biodiversity park with its diverse ecosystem serves as a sink for greenhouse gases and serves as habitat for the preservation of vanishing natural heritage and hence also serves as a mitigation mitigation against the climate change. This is uh, even, even resolution also. This is uh, the IOCN uh, thing also. And this is what uh, the aim of the, any conservation effort that we should go and mitigate against the climate change. Next, please. Then why we need biodiversity parks nowadays? Because we have wildlife sanctuaries, we have national parks, we have you know, nature reserves, we have other you know uh, means of conservation. So in urban centers, the development matrix has virtually wiped out the natural heritage, which include ecosystem, communities, space, species, and habitats. It's collectively, biodiversity in resulting rapid deterioration of environmental quality, which in turn adversely impacted the quality of life. The air pollution hazards, water crisis due to depletion of groundwater and reduction in stream flows, formation of heat islands, desertification, that is aridity, vulnerability to extreme climate events and flooding and water logging of highways are the environmental issues that are threatening the urban centers. Biodiversity parks are adaptive strategy for climate change and also biodiversity parks are an adaptive strategy for climate change and also mitigate and impart resilience to climate change. So uh, some of the points uh, I discussed about, and these are all funk uh, by the virus. Next, please. What is the approach? What is the approach of, you know, uh, to have a biodiversity park? So biodiversity park is an energy approach to bring back the lost vanished natural heritage in urban centers and enhance the environmental quality. It differs from all other ex situ conservation approaches, like you know, botanical gardens, zoological gardens, or uh, inbreeding uh, uh, captive breeding centers. So the, it, it differs from all other ex situ conservation approaches or efforts. Biodiversity parks simulate national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, or wilderness habitat, except that the biodiversity parks are markedly smaller in size than most of the areas. So this is what the, the approach is. Biodiversity Park approach is a pioneer conservation approach for not only bringing back the lost natural heritage specific to the area, but also for conservation of vanishing ecosystem comprising epistemic communities on marginal, degraded, vacant landscapes. Next, please. So uh, when uh, this program was given to Delhi University, so we touched both the landforms of Delhi, Delhi and develop, start developing biodiversity park across the, both the landforms, the river Yamuna portion and the Aravalis portion. So at present, we are developing almost a series of seven biodiversity parks comprising almost 2,500 acres of land. That is almost 10 square kilometer area of Delhi and uh, this naming Yamuna, Northern Ridge, Aravalli, Leela Hoss, Tilpat Valley, Tuglakabad, in South Delhi biodiversity parks. These are the names and the other locations uh, series wise. And uh, from uh, 2002 to till now, we have seven biodiversity parks. It is 20 years of effort that collectively we paid. And some of the parks are functional, some of the parks are in between, some of the parks are uh, just, you know, they started on a half years back. So uh, this is what the status is. Next, please. I'll I'll take a case study in detail about Aravalli Biodiversity Park with two other parks so that one can understand how biodiversity parks are contributing to the wildlife conservation and its management uh, in a very uh, specific way and that can be extrapolated. So Aravalli Biodiversity Park uh, spreads over an area of almost 692 acres having mining pits, bridges and flatlands. Uh, next please, this is our, uh, this is our, next please, yeah. Let's go to previous one. Go to previous one. It's just before that. This entire map of Aravalli. This is our operational area. 
some of the areas are still in developing phase and these are the depict these depicting are showing the different plant or forest communities being developed over here next please uh the topographic feature it is sharply undulating and rugged terrain with deep pits of varying sizes and then having very steep to moderately deep slopes. so this is what the mining effect and this area is in between basant Bihar and basant Kulch. is very prominent area and the mining has been done long back and uh, it is it was just lying as it is with uh, government was having some kind of development activities to develop into concrete jenga next please then a uh, central flatland with the small small and shallow depressions and depression with rocky outcrop these are the land features topographic features of aravalli virus park next please then uh after mining uh what happened the natural vegetation was wiped out and the weed infestation started and mostly it is the prosopis which has invaded the entire uh, ground uh, uh, to the top canopy level and they spread across the across the park and uh, 95 percent of the area was invaded by this prosopis flora. next please so how to go about how to go about <laughs> how to go about if the theme is to conserve wildlife and its management so wildlife is not only the animal communities or animal component it is all together combines both the things that is wildlife it is a wild plants so or wild animals both together they form the wildlife so it is a place that provides the space for both the life forms that the wild wild plant life forms and the wild wild animals life forms so it is a association of both together that you have to go and then only you can conserve the wildlife so uh just to go about you assess the area you you go for habitat preparation pruning of the branches reduce the foliage cover for more sunlight if you want to have forest cover or base at the base level that's what they started of the work we have taken the area you can see the underneath is nothing at the process is rural in nature they do not allow anything to come out so it is an allopathy, it has an allopathy effect and it finishes everything, it pollutes this soil, it it just makes the dead to all the decomposers so that nothing comes out even and they block the ground aquifers also. So you don't get even the ground vegetation or the annuals, the grasses or herbs during monsoon even. That's what we have witnessed uh, when we entered into this area which was given to us to the Vardasi Park or as a wildlife refuge of the remnant. Uh, I left Delhi Aravalis. Next, please. So then you remove the weeds also, the lantana, other weeds, Lucinia, then other annual weeds. So manually starting, it takes time to prepare land. Then you can think about what kind of plant communities and animal communities will come over here. Next, please. Then uh, the very important part of your stocks of you know, wine. Uh, plants collected from different forest nurseries or forest reserves or national park awareness sanctuaries. So you establish a uh, 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 nursery also. You sometimes you don't get to you generate. You just uh, generate your sapling also from the nursery itself. Next, please. Then uh, seeing the topography, you decide as per the landscape what kind of plant communities will come. So we surveyed the area of the entire Aravalis, right from the Pavagar to Gujarat to uh, Delhi and seen what kind of you know, communities are existing in entire Aravali hill ranges. And moreover, because some of the areas are man-made in Delhi, like mining pits are deep depressions, so they provide different kind of microclimate. So we can think about, we can play something with the moist plant communities are typical of the Gujarat Aravalis or the Rajasthan, the Mount Abu, some of the moist Arabic uh, vegetation. So we selected uh, different plant communities type at landscape level. Next, please. Then uh, you have flatland, you have you know slopes out of the mining. So strategically, the slope stabilization plantation was also done. And then uh, the flatlands plantation was also done before it going to that to digging pits and everything was done. Next, please. Then 
grasses are pioneer uh, in giving you forest because they retain the moisture for longer duration as well as they provide you microbes also so animals will come start will come in, and then you have the ground insects so that is the some level of food cascade you are going to develop so initially the grassland birds will come initially some ground dwelling animals will come so this is what the initiation of any any of the area to develop into a nature reserve or whatever we are discussing with conservation of wildlife uh, in a degraded land how it can be done in positive next please then uh, plantation activities it was it was in a way similar way as you find the random distribution of plant species in any of the forest area so randomly we planted the communities in proportion by suppose it, if it is a stregulia boswellia community so it is something 40 20 then again some lania species so these are all uh, proportions of the communities were decided and the numbers were decided and then we, we just planted as the landscape to the entire area in, in plantation uh, of plant communities as we as discussed next please then uh, after plantation you manage also so what thing up to four years depending upon the species then manuring mulching and netting removal of prosopis spot and removal of other weeds. This was the continuous process so that whatever vegetation of the pristine area it used to be existed over here, it should not that again the weed should come out and uh, your entire saplings are because there is a competition between weeds and the native vegetation. And always the weeds always have opportunity uh, to just take out the, uh, the entire nutrients in the soil or surrounding areas and again they will come out. So this is the management part. Then only we can think about how we are going to manage our wildlife and conserve our wildlife. Next, please. Then fencing plantation to avoid damage and public conflict. So this was given land to us. So we started, you know, taking out the weeds, and we have used the same poles uh, to fence the plantations because as we started planting, they were uprooted by many of the, you know. Uh, rodents or hidden wildlife within this area because they they want roots to be eaten by so porcupine where here some some population of porcupine was here then sometimes you know some uh, mongoose they come and just eat all these things so we we thought that how to go about because this simple this fencing will not be enough too so we just fenced and this is a uh, chicken wire mesh then this pole was used by uh, used uh, cutting out of the precipice and other weeds so we use the same material over here it was economic also next please then management of wildlife wild, wild animals so introduce the native shrub communities also at the same time for berries and fruits to introduce native flowering shrubs for attracting pollinators so that the future seeding and regeneration is ensured uh, for sustainability or area then monitoring of wildlife populations regularly that we have done and eradicated some of the nuisance or these stray dogs or other from this area so that your inhabitants who are establishing their niche they're establishing their you know livelihood over here that wild animals nesting breeding or whatever it is they should not be they should have a free uh, life over here and managed so we eradicated uh, eradication of stray dogs also next please then uh if you want, if you're talking about the uh, biodiversity or uh, nature reserve, or, so you should have habitat diversity within. So the center flatland earlier uh, it used to be a barren cattle cattle grazing area was developed as grassland. So a series of you know mosaic of hundred acres area comprising almost more than two hundred two twenty wildlife grass species have been developed as a grassland. The habitat is presently used by grassland birds and other animals, and hair population and end ponds have increased many folds. So, this is what the establishment of the cascade of the trophic structure at all levels either predator or prey base, the vegetation is a prey base or predator. This is what cascade ecosystem you develop and uh, cascade trophic structure you develop, and that you conserve and manage. Uh, you know, right Next, please. Then, some of the mining pits. We have got different microclimate in some of the mining pits and we developed some of the thematic units 
special conservatories. Uh, so it is orchid conservatory. When we enter into this uh, mining pit, it was a different uh, microclimate, and we have given a theme up, you know, uh, to develop orchid conservatory. This has attracted many insects, many birds, and reptiles within this area, and some of the amphibians they witnessed over here. Then the butterfly conservatory, great pollinators, so and then fun conservatory and medicine plant conservatory. So these are the thematic units developed within the mining pits into this area and reduced all wild plant species which used to exist over here in Delhi in the past. And that too, some of the species are across the Aravalis because the mining pits have given us opportunity to have some other species from other than Delhi region also. Next, please. So uh, the changes taken over, I'll, I'll just show you the, the blow up, the uh, changes taken in the last uh, 18 years, what we have done from the ground zero, barren area, to the functioning uh, plant abiotic communities, and they are all enjoying their life. Next, please. So this is uh, a typical uh, barren area It was given to us after mining effect you can see that what is left over truck loads are moving and people are moving so you have just the bushes and uh, nothing else was there when we enter into this area and plant accordingly then we have developed this into a, a typical dry deciduous forest or Delhi comprising some 30 to 40 plant species and protein grasses and shrubs and tree communities next please Uh, this this is very interesting slide. This is the Basant Bihar uh, entry gate from Air India Colony, and we when we entered into this area, this was the full prosopis prosopis mature forest, full of prosopis, and nothing was there. Means people were not entering into this. So this is a replaced prosopis forest of a typical moist broadleaf deciduous forest species. So this is almost uh, a contiguous from the poverty mark to, to other areas. So again, it is a weed eradication and bringing back the lost plant communities that from this area. And now it is home to many of the snakes, porcupine, blue bull, mongoose, civet, many bird species, butterflies, insects. So it is all a micro and they are enjoying life here. Next, please. This one of the mining pits I was discussing to develop as orchid uh, orchid conservatory. So this is a typical 2005 scene when whole range of people are standing over here. This is urban minister at that time. Srajay Makan was at that time. He visited the site. So we developed this into orchid conservatory. And the scene is at present now because these are very special plants. Orchids are epiphytic plants. They grow on the above ground and they require a very specific kind of uh, temperature and humidity means uh, at one time it should not go beyond a 9 to 30 degree temperature and at one time it should not go below the humidity uh, from 40 to 60 to 90 percent and Delhi you can see you, you know that Delhi experiences the temperature range from 1 to 47 degree temperature so it was the opportunity of the mining pit and then the best use of the dead landscape that we have developed this uh, mining pit to orchid conservatory and now it is supporting the one of the only bad colony of Delhi in this very orchid orchid conservatory and many of the beehives are here honeybees are here butterflies are coming birds are coming so this is what and nesting also nesting also so this is what uh, microclimate within within the park also that is a theme we have developed and it is giving the opportunity to all animals that they are enjoying different diversity of habitat within as they enjoy in nature reserves on what is central nature park. Next, please. Then this is one of the more lost plant communities of Aravalis. Means it is in highly endangered plant community is Stachulia Boswellia community. You can see the condition of the mining dumps. Mining dumps and the prosopis. So we replace and we brought back the typical Climax vegetation of Arabali Hill Ranges. It is found in uh, Pavagad, Gujarat, to 
the climax of the Udaipur forest to Haryana to Delhi. So it used to exist once upon a time and now it is there and they are supporting typical wildlife in this area. Next please. Then uh, this path used to be used by truckloads for carrying out the dumping material. Now we have developed this into a uh, nature trail. Public are using it. Monitoring also being utilized, giving all the green barrier, natural barrier to the entire path. So this is what uh, being developed to different aspects of the park and supporting, supporting hundreds of wildlife. So Next please. Uh, this is very interesting uh, mining pit. It used to be a contiguous land from here to here. Now you can see the mining material they have taken from here. And this almost 70, 80 feet deep, this entire portion. So we have given all kinds of habitats over here, right from the riparian to the slope communities to the top community. This one is the Stracolia Boswellia community that I just said. So this is from, and it is supporting. Many, many of the aquatic seasonal birds, the water bodies within that seasonal water body, then to the top area of that. Uh, and yes, uh, many wildlife, uh, it is jackal, the jackal is breeding over here nowadays. Then many snake species, many bird species, and then blue bull, cocoa pine. So, this is what a typical macro habitat, uh, macro habitat that has been developed out of development of the mining pit and uh, uh, supporting by day. Next please. Then uh, mining dumped into a corridor connecting plant communities or areas and movement of the animals also they are enjoying this thing into and we are using this for guided education purpose also. So this is what uh, conversion of you know different landscapes into different uh, you know connecting or as you have in a forest and being utilized by animals. Next, please. Uh, this used to be again a path for the clothes of mining and descent, and now it is developed into a nature trail and passing, and people are using just for bird watching, butterfly watch, plant watch. So this is what a kind of you know guided tour we are taking into this area also. Next, please. A barren land restored as a lost scrub forest of Delhi. This is all 18 years of effort. Now you can see all these, and it is typically providing the insectivore guild of bird species as well as some of the animal communities existing over here. Next, please. Then a uh, degraded land into a uh, mixed diverse plant community. The same. So, this is what I will go detail after that because I'm just showing you the blur. Uh, the, what uh, we habitat we have achieved and what kind of animal communities are surviving. I'll go to get to my slides. Next, please. Then uh, some of the areas near to this is a JNU campus. This is JNU campus. This is Vasant Kunch, Vasant Vihar, Nisamandia Road. And this adjoining area of that. Now you can see the typical foothill forest of you know this moist as far as the broadleaf is existing and it is almost almost 100 acres adjoining the area touching the uh, parks boundary next please then uh what you get out of that when you develop plant communities so plant community developed are used as food base by animals you can see uh how they are utilizing the butterflies the birds of prey or the blue bull then some of the insectivore uh, uh, mammals also, or uh, reptiles also. Next, please. Then plant community developed as used as a shelter and breeding grounds for animal communities. It's either the breeding or nesting or feeding. So they are supporting all these uh, shelter based or prey based uh, habitat for all these animal communities. Next, please. Uh, since biodiversity parks are in urban setups and it's large enough to sustain the urban people as well as the wildlife they are in they are thriving so we 
we divided biodiversity parks into two zones that is nature reserve zone and visitor zone so this is typical uh, of the visitor zone the area was given to us like this when we entered into this there is a basant prihar priya complex this is jnu campus in this and it is almost 90 acres of land that we dedicated to the visitor zone because people will come students will come visitors will come so this is what it happens in nature reserves also or wildlife sanctuary national park but here also we have not sacrificed uh, this area as a typical that it should be disturbed and this and that so we developed native egyptian along and as well as some kind of aesthetics we tried to give so that people can enjoy and just you know go around and the 90 percent people can go back from this area and 10 percent people if they are serious walkers they want to have a wildlife watch or bird watching or plant watch or butterfly watch so they are allowed and entered into and they are guided and they are taken into different areas of the park next place now this is part of visitor zone that we developed into it used to be a barren government wanted there should be a four lane road from Basant Pihar to Basant Pinch, but denied Supreme Court had intervened and they had declared this area into a green or should be developed as a biodiversity park or wildlife refuge that what uh, would think that court has done and this area is saved now otherwise it would have gone with the infrastructure development next please so what we have done, we have done here a showcase of available vegetation. So we developed uh, in 20 acres of area, some 13 dominant available plant communities, typical of Delhi, Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, we have established. So this is Trachulia, then Butea, Elangium, Hodorina, and Oasis, and Butea, Mithalagaina, Tecumila, and Decorus, Tekis, Acacia communities we developed so that people are not going uh, without seeing the typical vegetation of Aravalis as well as the opportunist animal communities will come here. They they visit the places for resting, for enjoying. So they see a lot more birds, a lot more butterflies. They are native to this particular uh, region and they are visiting to Aravalis University Park and to Delhi. So that's what we try to develop so that the other areas should not get disturbed the wild animals should not get disturbed. They function their you know, normal activities, breeding, feeding, and they feel that as if that I am at home. Next, please. Then some of that endangered tree species conservatory because we have to uh, we have to show people that yes, what uh, if you have a forest, then what kind of forest we have? What they provide? These all the selected some twenty species of. Endangered tree species of Arabalis, it's the Kulia, Anoesis, Cirocarpus, Butia, Monosperma. These are all we have given as a showcase to show people the wilderness inside what we have in the form of communities. Next, please. Then, some thematic units like uh, succulent plant conservatory. They at attract many of the open. Uh, open spaces as you have mosaic habitat within the forest you have some outcrops you have some where you have some where you have succulent plants some you have grasslands so you diversify within the habitat itself so that you attract more species for opportunistic feeding opportunistic breeding and if you give them safe space they will reside they will just be there as happens in Mr. Park and Medicine Sanctuary you give them protection you give them ample space and but those those areas are uh, typically managed by uh, the administrators. These areas are, biodiversity parks are managed by scientific communities in a very, 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 very strict way. Next, please. Uh, we have developed a small area as a house sparrow, the state bird of Delhi sparrow conservatory. I, I have shown you the previous slide. So they are visiting, they are nesting here, and it is now home for the diminishing or declining house sparrow population next please then uh, a very uh, very notive concept of new foreign interest conservatory first in delhi is a mining pit we developed uh, a, this uh, voluntary conservatory within they are spreading across you know surrounding areas 
carrying the pollens and just spreading the building this thing and providing seeds to future generations and providing food to many of the species as a food cascade and food base. There is a very interesting uh, structure that we have developed here is it called as insect hotel. So sometimes you know when they want nesting they need some space. So we have used this raw material of this thing and moisten it. So many of the insects now they have making nesting over here and they are just enjoying. So this is what the conservation and they are spreading across. Next please. Uh, since it is a biodiversity park and uh, I talked about the visitor zone. So we we have developed some the aesthetic sense also within the visitor zone at, at the entrance of this. So a rosarium has been established in visitor zone area with 30 varieties of roses. That is all named one and it is providing to aesthetic to people as well as sometimes you know many bird species they are visiting to this place. Next please. Then varieties of Bougainville area also. It is all named to some 25 varieties have been established. This is all a visitor zone, nothing to do with the conservation zone of ours. So this provides some kind of aesthetic also and fragrance to the people of Delhi. Next, please. Then uh, community participation activities. That is one of the uh, major objectives and tools to inculcate the entire society. Uh, to come and participate and understand why and uh, what nature gives us and why it is required. So it is a, one of the goals and objectives of you know, conservation of wildlife and death management. Next, please. Then uh, nature conservation education. So we invite all sections of students across from Delhi and CR and other areas also across country. People are coming and having concept and they are enjoying this uh, this thing and uh, taking knowledge and just uh, because our goal also is to carve out some of the human resource out of these students they out of 105 you know comes to this field so our purpose is solve that five students at least they are going into this wildlife conservation or nature conservation field out of this stock next please we provide nature education camping facility or facility also which is very basic so we provide them tents and uh, the camping activity we take 40 hours day and night over here so we have module and different activities being performed by student so this is what just to expose them that what are the limitations of nature and when you are into the nature even then you can survive without you know so it is also we provide a message to change the lifestyle so that the flora and fauna should get space anywhere they are. Next, please. So, pool for conservation will also adopt that signages and boards, daily discussion with visitors, celebrating events related to environment and biodiversity conservation, and sharing outcomes through scientific papers and standing seminars in person. This what uh, different tools we just adopt. Uh, apart from developing and taking care of the area being developed and taking care of the wildlife within we have we adopt all modules of conservation before going into this so we are uh, we have adopted all modules of conservation next please and uh, yes badassi park is a research station apart from providing ecological services and conservation values badassi parks also provide also providing research efforts to students, students from different universities such as DU or Indraprastha or AMU and many more to name are conducting their field research on different aspects of biodiversity parks, means short term projects they are doing, MSc dissertation works they are doing, some schools they are small small projects they are doing. So this is what some media fellows they are coming from making movies on environment and wildlife. So this is what as a living museum Biodiversity parks are utilized. utilized. Next, please. Uh, so, what we introduced and what we accumulated. So, from 2005 to 2022, the terrestrial plant we we surveyed from here to this to this to all 
initially we surveyed the entire area almost four five six months it has taken for the time we prepared land also and then we started introducing the terrestrial plants so from 150 to 902 it is terrestrial plant it includes all your trees your shrubs your grasses then aquatic plants it was zero because aravali portion of delhi is uh, not like uh, typical of aquatic vegetation but it, it it accumulates some seasonal water bodies during monsoon so that we also introduce some of the aquatic plants then some from 5 members so 19 now they are every fauna is drastic change from 42 to 206 uh this species the tiles and premium 626 and five butterflies and moths from 13 to 115 butterflies this what the change profile of the biodiversity is a typical it's all typical from a mammal to butterfly they are all wild and being conserved and replicating and enjoying uh, most many of many of the birds racial birds they are just breeding over here nesting over here the amphibians almost they are breeding and nesting here in butterflies some are migrant they are coming and breeding and just multiplying over here next please so these are all wildflowers the gem of the hills of Aravalis, which were not here they attract many birds for nectar many insects for nectar and many uh, and upon them you have food caskets fed by the many insectivore birds so this is what you maintain a food chain also within the forest ecosystem next please then the insect diversity in trees many fold is the main prey base for any either you take reptiles you take birds you take you know, any of the insectivore animal so, uh, insects are the prey base so if insects are not there you can evaluate the if I can evaluate the value of that area or the biodiversity value of that area and how they will come they will come through establishment of your typical plant communities at all level either the grasses or the shrubs the tree layer to the aquatic vegetation they all support this prey, prey, prey base and it, it is a part of you know food cascade of ecosystem next please This is butterfly diversity of Aravali biodiversity from 15, 13 to 215 now. These are all photographed from park only itself. So they are bioindicators. Butterflies are called as bioindicators of an ecosystem as equal to tiger in any forest ecosystem. Because each butterfly requires a range of host specific plants and if one butterfly require one to 15 plant species if you have 100 you need to have more than 1000 plant species up in your area so that depicts the diversity of vegetation that depicts the heterogeneity of the vegetation that depicts the the heterogeneity at all levels that support all kind of animal you know, in the communities so if you have butterflies in your area they are multiplying breeding is your area is good one so is one way of you know apart from birds if you identify butterflies you, you assess your butterflies you can evaluate any area that how much wildlife you have next please then spider diversity of butterflies these are all a kind of you know food cascade within the ecosystem they provide something to nesting to feeding to breeding so they are all wide next please and reptilian diversity we have all it's almost 25 uh, reptilian species we have right from the python to all cobra and viper rat snake variety of rat snake then our geckos next please Then Aravali, uh, birds of Aravali, birds of Aravali, Aravali Park. So almost 215 bird species were recorded and some of the passage migrants, then resident birds are here, winter migrants are here, terrestrial, typical. So they are all, because Delhi used to be one of the best passage migrant uh, migration space uh, in the past, but due to uh, 
developmental activities, you finish your wildland, so they were not coming. But now, after you know, development of the parks, many of the species now they are coming to, they are staying, and they are going back. So it is a kind of you know refuge that biodiversity parks are providing during the stress period when uh, they don't have food base in their stress environment in the Himalayas and the foothills or, or or other extreme areas in the deserts also. Next please. A case study I will just share what we have done uh, of birds in early biodiversity park. So monitoring has been started since the beginning of the restoration work 2005. Data have been restored every year, but there is, but here it has been grouped into five years. Also, you cannot. So area is divided into restored and degraded habitat. Birds have been recorded according to their feeding functional groups. So functional groups are insectivore, ground insectivore, leaf, trunk, carnivore, nectarivore, granivore. These are all water omnivores. Gills we have divided into with bee eaters, babblers, and wagglers. So we have divided the groups into different groups. Next, please, I'll show you the slide. This is what the uh, bar chart shows, the graph it shows and that 2007 it was 26, then uh, 38 in the stored area. Then, after five years, you have 145 species, a drastic change that it attracted many uh, bird species, all you know, gills. And in 2018, it was uh, 164 out of 26. So you can see the drastic change in just uh, from 2007 or 5 in 13 years to 164. And now it is 213 bird species at all levels. Next, please. So uh, the result has come out that large progivore, trunk insectivore means it is the hornbill or the your pipe, uh, woodpeckers and water omnivores were totally absent from the whole area in 2005. The study says that the stored areas are capable of increasing habitat availability for all bird species. All frugivore and insectivore species were born in the stored in sites in 2018. And ground and leaf insectivore species have significantly increased from 2007 to 2018 as the litter increased on the forest floor as well as the insect population increase based on plants. This is what continuously we are doing it. We are doing it not butterflies also uh, since uh, 2005, how they have been dispersed in different areas and they are finding their host plant to breed and survive and providing food base to many, many of the uh, bird species like bird they feed upon the caterpillars or butterflies of Mean of the bird species they feed upon the adults also. So this is what we are trying to have a study based on long term this uh, our restoration work also. Next please. Then biodiversity park concept is to mitigate the species extinction depth by increasing habitat availability. So I told you that biodiversity parks are smaller in size, but they simulate national park and wildlife sanctuaries. And data suggests that the habitat availability for different groups of bird species has increased in the past 13 years. Next, please. Uh, apart from this, another accomplishment of Aravali Biodiversity Park played a crucial role in selection of plant species in development of a new plant-based drug, Proquil ZN, for the cure of COVID-19 disease as a joint program with the Delhi Pharmaceutical Science and Research University. This is what uh, plant species we have given as a resource and as a knowledge base from here itself it has gone and one drug has come out it is immunization drug and it is it is just getting uh, about to get approval from the IOSH ministry it will come into the markets this is what way serving society as well as the wildlife we are talking about all together we are doing it and some more achievements a new Thomasid spider species, Thomasus spidenthus, have been reported first time in the park from India. A leopard gecko, which have been recorded from Aravali Biodiversity Park with extended range in northern region, and the Blythe horseshoe bat uh, found only in Aravali Biodiversity Park. So these are all uh, area it supports in multi facet ways. Uh, in terms of you know what it can be in what form it can be utilized either as a wildlife refuge or as a ecosystem services to people of you know urban setup or 
any other innovation resource like you know drug production or any other species which has not been reported now they have come up on their own or where they are not reported this what the way that biodiversity parks are uh, conserving the wildlife and supporting nature next please then uh, some more species like Indian Pitta was cited after 70 years in Aravani Biodiversity Park. This what means it was locally extinct from entire Delhi region. So we reported this from in a mining pit after uh, uh, the restoration of that because it is a very specific bird that require moist deciduous forest type and that too in a mining pit it was cited. So we developed we predicted that this kind of a species may come and it has come. Then Oriental Pied Hormone cited after 40 years in Delhi, now a regular visitor. It is coming through because getting fruit and other things, not for breeding, but certainly it is a regular visitor to Aravali Biodiversity Park. Next please. Then successful nesting of endangered Eurasian eagle owl, it requires a very specific and elusive habitat to breed and survive. There is the biggest owl of Delhi so it is since then we spotted this we secure its habitat and now it is successfully uh, breeding and nesting and producing offspring next please so the mammals uh, of Rawali biodiversity park that we they are surviving enjoying and thriving is indian civet jackal porcupine in india blue bull mongoose and other species also mammals next please then uh, we dedicated this uh, park to the nation on uh, World Earth Day on, the, on in 2015. Uh, the Honorable Governor has inaugurated this thing. So it, we have dedicated this way to open to the public for you know visits as a part of uh, you know, education or some areas are allowed just a visit. Next, please. So if you see uh the area was handed over delhi university you can see what kind of area it used to be you can see the surrounding areas of delhi it is a vasant vihar this is our park area this is slum all this next please then uh some shape it has started taking place still uh this this area this we started developing this area first this area first then this area first we started in this some um, grassland we started developing burial. Next, please. Then this is a present scenario. This present scenario with all this, it has come up. Totally, it has come up. This area is taken out, taken into account. This area is developed. This area is developed. This area is developed. So a green island and this concrete jungle has come up now. Next, please. I'll, I'll show you two more examples of Vadasti Park, uh, that is the restoration of a degraded wetland in Delhi. Uh, next, please. So, Nila Hose used to be the biggest lake of South Delhi in the past. Its name says that it used to be Nila, and it was providing drinking water to South Delhi some 500 years back. But due to developmental activities, the lake was degraded by the deconstruction of Arnavasakli bridge and flow of a sewage. So it is now a present at that time it was a combination of a sewage water, full of sewage water. Then public has intervened into the, to the high court, they have gone and they have asked the government to revive to its pristine glory, which is used to be in the past. So it was again given to us to develop a small biodiversity park. The area is very small, some 10 acres, and the water body is almost five acres. So we, we developed into a functional wetland ecosystem using constructive wetland system. Next, please, I'll show you next. how the treatment of sewage water by constructive wetland system before discharging into the lake. So this is what they discharge here, and it comes into in that format, which I have so shown you. Then we have developed a model of constructed wetland ecosystem where you have physical and biological chemical remediations and then you get a clean water because this requires a physical visit and you see the miracular wonder it has taken place and now 
the lake in this form and attracting uh, the many of the aquatic migratory birds. Next, please. The same lake we have seen, the filth water, the sewage water. Now it is totally the functional water, but it used to be in the past. And it is using uh, zero energy level. It is not being utilized, so it is only the natural model we have created. And now it's fully restored and tested wetland is fully functional. It has already become educational and recreation entry for the public. It has become also a model for the restoration of quality water bodies in the country. So NGT has NGT has adopted this model and they have come out with a guidebook to develop a small sewage water into a different uh, with the, using this kind of you know mode of you know, treatment to develop into biodiversity park and treat the sewage water. Next please. This is what we have done with the entire landscape. This is what the constructed wetland I have shown you. This is what the surrounding we have developed into a plant communities. And uh, the bridge by talking about it has dumped the entire Malwa over here. Now it is a functional uh, ecosystem, aquatic ecosystem. It's a small model and is a model how you can treat a sewage water without using any energy uh, to a functioning wetland ecosystem. Next, please. Now we can see the same with the aquatic birds. These are all the resident birds, spot bills. But certainly we received the red crest butchered and there is some winter, winter migration. So they are here. It is highly monitored. So we are monitoring this also. Next, please. Now, uh, the Yamuna Biodiversity Park. This is another landscape. I will show you some few slides only how we have touched both the landforms. It used to be a sodic soil, entire area used to be a sodic soil, barren and degraded. And now we have brought back the Yamuna floodplains biodiversity of Delhi region and to some extent some of the biodiversity of uh, adjoining areas of Yamuna floodplains. Next, please. This we developed uh, a water body within the Yamuna biodiversity park. It is called as deep wetland. Here, every year we almost get uh, more than 5,000 migratory birds from across the world, Liberia or China or other areas. So, this is what the conservation we are doing. 100 acres wetland stored by field, the predation bird lovers of Delhi and receive both resident migratory bird species, including painted stock, Asian open bill, basket butcher. Next, please. Diversity in dragonflies and demonstrating wetlands of a Next, please. Then some of the amphibians, they are there. Next. Then this is uh, Heronry. It is being established after developing Yamuna Biodiversity Park. The darter migrates, the night heron. This was the lost nesting uh, night heron from Delhi itself. Now it has been established. And then little cormorant. So they all are maintaining, the heronry is being maintained. They are nesting. Most welcome. Next, please. Then you can see uh, in a barren land the trophic structure completed when the leopard entered into Yamuna Biodiversity Park in five years back. But you cannot keep it, so it was translocated or relocated from here to somewhere else. You cannot keep it, but yes. The Asiatic cat, jungle cat, Indian common civet, Indian hare. This more this hog deer is a very interesting to have this hog deer and hog pine. These are all except this. All are just enjoying life over here in our Yamuna Biodiversity Park. Next, please. So, concept of biodiversity park is spreading across India. Many states have started developing biodiversity park in different states. We have visited many states recently. Our team has visited uh, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, then Madhya Pradesh, then Odisha. So many of the states, they are coming with biodiversity park concept. And biodiversity parks can also be uh, developed in adjacent areas of national park and wildlife sanctuaries because it's a small area. So they can play a refuge or as a corridor for pandemic also. Next, please. 
this is our team of you know staff working over here so cr babu my recipe program in charge then the scientific staff technical staff and some 100 field workers they are working in the field and is only team that and apart from this all infrastructure we need the physical settings means the maintenance of paths or any infrastructure it is being provided by dda civil and electrical branches or divisions of dda this is what a collaborative thing so we develop natural heritage and they provide some kind of infrastructure to biodiversity parks and uh, it is because of this joint collaboration the entire thing is being managed and your wildlife being conserved and managed i hope that uh, i have not taken much time i am in time so any questions please uh, most welcome